All right, so today we are going uh, to look at um, homework problems that utilize the properties that we saw yesterday, okay? Um, now, this up here at the top says radical review one, simplifying uh, radicals, okay? Now, uh, on Alex, there is a homework called radical review one, review one, simplifying radicals. It is also, Twelve questions. Question, and they are uh, in the same sort of order, and they, they resemble this, and it's it's great. Okay, so go back to my computer. All right, so you can close your MacBooks now. What I want to look through here, and uh, answer some of these questions together, and then we're going to do this for radical review two, and then we're going to do this for radical review three, and hopefully. Your paper has holes punched in it, yes, yes? Yeah. Because remember, the core part of the requirements of this class we need to have a binder, okay? And so you would open up, when at the end of this sort of discussion, open up to the section that says like handouts and homework or something like that, and you open up your binder, you put it in your binder, and it's there, and you have access to it, and you're organized, you're an organized person, right? This is how, this is what people do that are organized. And the reason we're organized is not for the sake of organization, but so that you can quickly access it, okay? So you get stuff done, all right? Um, so that's why we're training you. And as a reward, uh, twice this nine weeks, maybe just once, if you have an organized binder, then I'll give you 100% on your binder grade. It's going to help you. It's going to give you a binder grade. Think of it as like an organization grade. Okay? It's pretty easy, right? Do you care what order we have it in? I do not care. Uh, I'll ask. You need to be consistent so that you can find it quickly. I would recommend the one that everybody would just work on, you just put it on top. That way you don't have to do a big to-do list. All right, um, I've given you a couple minutes to work on some of these problems. We're not gonna work all of these. You're gonna work all of them for homework, okay? I just wanna kind of take a, a, a sampling and see uh, what Alex has to say and what you have to say about the right answers. So uh, starting off real basic, what are all the real square roots of 81, folks? Nine, negative nine. Negative nine, positive nine. Okay, sounds good. What about the real square roots of sixty-four? Eight. Could we put positive? Could we put plus or minus nine or plus or minus eight? You could on your paper. That's no big deal. Alex, I think is going to want to have two answers separated by a comma. Okay. So uh, that the answer editor will take care of a lot of that stuff. Okay, let's simplify this one. It says square root of twenty-five all the square root of eighty-one. Okay, so y'all just went straight for. I mean. Y'all remember you could do square root of 25 or square root of 81, and then you're going, I know that's five, and I, that, no, that's nine. Absolutely, good stuff. Let's go down here to some more uh, interesting problems here. This says negative the square root of 49, okay? Negative out front, no big deal. It's just negative whatever this number happens to be. What is the square root of 49? Seven. seven. So this would be negative seven. What about the other? What uh, about the, oh, you mean the other for this one? If it's a negative seven, it's a positive seven. Yeah. With nine after it. Yeah, well, here's. No, because there's two numbers. Well, you might say, what's the square root of 49, right? And the answer to the square root of 49 is positive seven and negative, or negative seven. And then here we have a negative out in front of it. So, by, so you might be thinking, I'm with you, and I like the simplicity. Isn't it something kind of like that? Right? And then, so then, a negative times a negative, or times a positive would make it be a negative. <coughs> and a negative times a negative would be a positive. So isn't the correct answer of minus or plus seven? And I would say, yeah, that kind of makes sense. I look at the answer key, and they just have negative seven. I'll have to take that, I'll have to ask them, okay? Um, Maybe there's something else in the instructions. No, this says just one answer. No. Um, well, they're bad. Um, I would say that, and this is kind of what I've seen in several other places, when you see somebody normally writing the square root just as sort of like an expression over there, it's implying the, what is the positive square root. But I do feel like that's a little bit ambiguous, and by y'all asking me that question, you should understand it. 
at this point, I would say, let's play by their rules. They're just looking for the positive answer, and then you got a negative slapped in front of it, and let's move on. Sound good? Sometimes you got to work with that. Square root of negative 64. Now, the other question. You got something, Trey? I see something going on in your eyes there. Not a real answer. You're correct. Not a real answer. Because, not a real answer, not a real number. Um, basically, there's no number that we multiply by itself to get equal to negative. We talked about that yesterday. So is the answer with I going to not be accepted on this? Because they asked for a real number. According to the uh, official answer sheet, which is what it's going to be grading against on your homework, the answer is not a real number. So in the in the answer editor, if that will be one of the options. You can type a number in, or you can ask, click a button that says, not a real number, and you'll just click that button. Um, you know, and I know, and I know that you know, and you know about that too. That it, it answers 8i, but this isn't what that would be. Alright. I want this. Alright, let's go to the back page. Ooh. I saw some of y'all had faith in this. I think 50 we did yesterday. Let's try a big number. Let's try number 9. Now, do y'all remember that process? that we did yesterday, we split it up, right? Yeah. We split it up into two numbers um, that are, uh, and we tried to find the, the, the biggest factor, or sorry, the, 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 the biggest perfect square factor that goes into 180. So if you remember that list, uh, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 29, something like that. Does anybody, was anybody able to find out what 36, is the biggest? 36. 36 is the biggest perfect square that goes into there. And what's its multiplier? Five. By five, okay. Um, I don't expect you to know this off the top of your head. Normally, just kind of, unless you have some awesome multiplication skills in your head, just do it with the calculator. You know, 180 divided by, you know, 100. No, 180 divided by 81, that kind of thing. So, uh, that, we remember that that was split up into square root of 36 because it's square root of five, and the square root of 36 is technically plus or minus six, but the only positive answer is the only power of four. So it's going to be six root five. Um, did anybody split up 188? What was it? Say it again. 47 by 4. 4. 4 is the biggest perfect square that goes into that? Yeah. Oh, wow. So you just have, so the square root of 4 is 2. So you just have 2 root 47? No. You are correct. All right, um, just as a reminder, I want to throw this in somewhere. We've got some Pythagorean theorem problems. We didn't get it real over yesterday because I showed it up to the point yesterday. But just for the purposes of discussion and thoroughness, when you have a right triangle, you have two sides that are uh, touching that right angle. What are the names of those sides? Yeah. Say again? Yeah. The legs. This is a leg, and this is a leg. What is this? name of the side that is not hypotenuse. a leg. It's a hypotenuse. Alright, now there is a formula for relating the legs to the hypotenuse. Um, we call one of the legs A, we call the other leg B. It doesn't matter which one is which. They're both legs. Alright? So, and that Pythagorean theorem, y'all know, say it together, class. Six plus two plus two plus two. Six plus two. hypotenuse is C. So utilizing the labels which I have attached here, we would say 6 squared plus x squared equals 8 squared. Therefore, if I square everything, so 6 squared is 36 plus x squared equals 64. We always subtract uh, 36 from both sides. So x squared is, help me out here, 28. 28. Now, how do I get rid of that square right there? Root it. Square root of whatever I do on one side. Root it. I got to do the other side. So x equals 
the square root of 28, you might say, Dominic, ooh, it's plus or minus, right? Square root of 28. Except it's just in the length. It is length. We are dealing with the triangle here, and as we all know, it's only meaningful to talk about length in terms of positive values. So it's our it's our knowledge of the problem which says it's not negative. Okay? That's what we bring to the table here. Uh, square root of 28. And then this is where I get, yeah, the thing is, is that this one doesn't ask for us to simplify that down into like two root seven. They actually say, round your answer to the nearest hundred, which 5.29, so there you go. And uh, your first homework will take you a few minutes. You have infinite number of retakes on these, and it's quick retakes, but if you get the first, you know, nine right and two wrong, then you just have to do those two. Okay, so next up, I'm going to give you a copy of Radical Review 2, and I'm going to give you about three or four minutes. Uh, don't do every single one in a row, maybe skip, just do the odds, or do one every three. And then we'll practice some of those together. Preston, I'm sorry, did you have a question or a comment? Uh, no. Yes. Multiply and simplify. Please feel free to uh, work together, talk to each other as a table, verify.
thing with Future Gun and Mr. Green? Mr. Green, can you see uh, uh, Mr. Green over there? Someone, he's got some coffee down here. Mr. Green, where should be up there? Can you give him a copy or something? Did you give him the name? Great, okay, thanks. How do you format it? How many paragraphs? Three or four. Wasn't it one page? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Said one page, two lengthy, two lengthy. Said one page, maximum one paragraph. We're going to start it off like a, like a way that they're once supposed to be young adults, what they're once supposed to be young adults. I actually wrote a language, a haiku, that's utter trash. I haven't even started my essay. I literally wrote a language when I was like, they're once supposed to be young adults. Oh, yeah.
square root of two, but just to be clear about everything that's going on. So the square root of nine is three. Square root of six is six. Square root of nine. All right, seven and square root of two. So you remember that commutative property that we talked about uh, first week. Doesn't matter what order you multiply it in. Four times three, which is twelve, times seven, which is. 84, and then I can multiply the square root of 6 with the square root of 2, and I get 12. square root of 12. Split up. Done, right? Well, no, nope. 4 and 3. I can split up that 12. Oh my gosh, okay, that's really kind of interesting. So yeah, I can split that up into 4 and 3. So I have 84 times, no, I split that up. Square root of 4 is 2. two. And then we have square root of 3. Oh my gosh, this just keeps on going. 84 times 2? 168. Square root of three. Bam. Okay. That is an acceptable exclamatory remark. School appropriate. Can we just know the answer to this quiz? Do you want to know what it is? Seventy-two. Yeah. Do we need to work that down? No. Square root of twelve. We actually just go that far right here, square root of 27 is going to be 9 and 3. Um, I want to go to the back and answer some of this weird stuff. There we go. So the square root of 3y times square root of y, because now we're actually getting algebraic up on this type of stuff, right? We're putting letters instead of numbers, but that's okay because the process is still the same, all right? And if you kind of go a little bit uneasy, that's okay. Everybody kind of gets a little uneasy when you go to letters because it really tests your knowledge if you know the process. But that's also why we teach algebra. So the square root of 3y times the square root of 11y would be the square root of 33y squared. Remember that you can bring those two together. Now. Um, if you want to, we can split that up into the square root of 33 times the square root of y squared. Can 33 be broken down into a perfect square? No. No. So that's as simple as it's going to get. What about the y? Yeah. The, the, uh, in fact, the square root of y squared is y. y. Okay. Now we could put the y right here. But that leaves it the door open for lazy people who kind of have a long, uh, you, you forget to lift their finger up, to put the Y somehow snuck back under there. So um, as a general rule, we'll put the, uh, the variable first. That's a failure to erase. Okay, so Y times the square root of 33. Um, you could put it the other way. You can put it square root of 33 times Y as long as you had good penmanship and it was very clear. When it comes to Alex and you enter your answers, it's going to be all electronic, it's going to be real clear. Don't accept either one. Um, I think you can see that 8 would be something very similar. Just for those of you that are curious, it's actually the same thing. And that completes homework 2 of Radical Review. And we are now ready for part 3. Oh, you're up. Uh, the good news is these are three separate homework assignments, therefore it's three separate grades, therefore you can, uh, can conceivably pad your, uh, your grade pretty quickly early on in here in the nine weeks by three hundredths without too much of a sweat. So this is the homework, but the homework is on Alex. That's correct. The homework is on Alex. Your alternative assignment. Did I miss one? Oh, okay. Oh, absolutely. Because this is just for the team and stuff like that. Yeah. They need to do it all individually.
just as a reminder, since I like saying it, anything divided by itself is one. one. And multiplying it by one, we're not changing the value. It's not like it was this size and now it's this size or smaller or anything. Like that. It's actually still the same size. It just is going to look a little bit different. Okay. So in other words, that's why I put an equal sign here. The square root of six divided by three is the same exact thing as the square root of two over three. This number and this number are equal. Still the same person, just change clothes. Okay? Or change third period rather than fourth period. Okay? So if we and if you didn't don't believe me, you can check it out for yourself. Type that in the calculator, square root of six, divided by three, and then square root of two over three. We've done that before. Uh, for those of you that did take care of number six, we're two over seven, we'll get that right answer. Um, we did these kind of together, we did them as a table. Many go out there and do this alone, so you probably already know how to do it. But for the sake of helping you out, we do have uh, the individual practice, it's the homework, and I'm Alex. If you look there behind Mr. Green Sword, you'll see my terrible handwriting on the assignment board. Um, so you've got this week, and you've got next week. So this week, 10 topics. That's the only thing that's due this week. Due by Friday, 11 o'clock, it's kind of the deadline that was set on that stuff. Next week, Friday, remember, pre-calculus, due on Friday. 10 topics, then radical review, one, two, and three. Uh, this is third period honors, because that's the one that you're looking at. And then you have uh, pre-calculus classes, which will be there. Class today, we talked about what? Can you tell me some things? Radical. Radical, can you a little bit more? Radical. Rationalizing or simplifying over there, yeah, okay. Multiplying. Number. All right, we did it, okay? It's not too bad. Like I said, normally I'm gonna teach it and then we'll do a couple, then I'll have you do a couple, but this is kind of a special case. And three homeworks is crazy much. It's never gonna be like that. 